Here we go! Right. So now that we've gotten all the, like, you know, bitty bitty news out of the way, I think we got to talk about some rather controversial news that affects gaming journalism as a whole. Uh, for those who don't know, gaming journalism is pretty heavily scrutinized, uh, no matter what side you're on. If you're on the, you know, the professional side, uh, like IGN, GameSpot, Game Informer, uh, all those other major outlets, or if you're on the amateur end, like we are here at the Nintendo Power Zone, uh, like with the Nintendo Power Couple has, like the Completionist and all these other people who, you know, we, we make... We have YouTube channels that are dedicated to gaming. I think this story affects us all significantly. So, because it, it, it's literally somebody coming from the YouTube end and moving into the professional end. Um, so, Philip Mewson, uh, the former host of the Nintendo Voice Chat podcast and the former Nintendo editor at IGN, was released from IGN uh, amidst plagiarism allegations. Now, as more and more information has come out about, you know, his alleged plagiarism, more and more it looks like it's no longer alleged, and it is factual that he has plagiarized uh, from many different media outlets on multiple occasions. Uh, this is this, when I when I first saw the news about this, I started. I took it with a real, you know, I took it with a grain of salt because every everybody, you know. Everybody loves to spread rumors in this day and age, especially since, you know, we have this, like, omnipresence with the internet, and we also get to be, you know, hidden behind, you know, a veil, if you so choose. That's why we actually do camera work on this channel, so that we're not hidden. Yeah, we use our gamer tags, but if you look me up, I'm sure it's not too hard to find my actual name. But yet and still, uh, Philip Musin came from the YouTube. He was a pretty popular YouTuber, and... He got he got called up to the major leagues. It doesn't get much more major league than IGN, um, and he, he got caught. And then he released a a video that was supposed to be somewhat of an apology slash telling of his side of the story. And it's no longer on YouTube. But if you've seen that video, it's pretty much a non-apology. So he's got a lot of backlash from that, but. In that video, he challenged Jason Schreier, who is a highly respected, you know, journalist for Kotaku, yeah. and he he put on an open challenge. He said, "Look at my work, scrutinize my work, and see how much of it is plagiarism." And as it turns out, it was a whole lot of it was plagiarism. So he got caught stealing from Nintendo Wire, Nintendo Life, uh, obviously, uh, Boomstick Gaming's the original. You know the the thing that got him caught. He's got caught uh, stealing from Wikipedia. He one of the stole... big ones that uh, people have been really like lambasting him over is his resume on LinkedIn. Apparently, it's just been copy pasted from a resume template, which that that looks really really bad. I get it. Resumes are hard. It's it's a lot of tough work, but to simply copy paste and not even change a word here or there, it's a really bad look, man. Really I've taken classes on how to make a resume properly. Like, I've legit taken classes on how to do that. And no, yeah, it's a resume, hard. yeah, a, a good resume is is a hard thing to come by. But at the end of the day, like, you can't really embellish that. So, a lot of scrutiny hasn't just been thrown at you know Philip Musin for this whole you know debacle. A lot of it has come back at you know game journalism as a whole, but more specifically IGN. Uh, I've had multiple conversations with multiple people about this uh, this incident, and it turns out that it doesn't look like IGN had a proper vetting process. Uh, they didn't verify any of his work. They uh, like they didn't proofread it uh, thoroughly enough. They didn't cross check his references. And, like I'm not saying IGN did a bad job. Like I, I never want to put out there that I think IGN did a bad job. I, clearly IGN is at the top of the heap for a specific reason. But somewhere along the line, somebody didn't do their due diligence in, in vetting Philip Mewson. Now, and you know, it's I think it's a bit difficult because part of it is uh, IGN's getting 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 a lot of shit for this. 
which may be somewhat deserved. But when you look at just journalism as a whole, their practices are not terribly uncommon. The idea, a lot, a lot of news stories and a lot of journalism stories these days are just, hey, uh, these guys reported it here. I'm going to take this story, uh, report on the story of the story, and then link to the original source. You know what I'm saying? And well, that's essentially what we do. We yeah, exactly. We, we don't have, we don't have the we don't have the same kind of resources as we are independent fan made a fan made podcast. We don't have the same kind of resources. We get our news the same way that other you know independent fan based you know people get their information. We get our information from other <clears throat> news sites. But yeah. what we do, what, what the difference here is. We'll take those news stories and we do not read them on the show. We do not read the articles verbatim. That's the one thing we've never done on the show. We we exactly. will we will look at the headline, read the article, and then formulate our own opinion and bring that to you. And that's why we're talking about this today, is because even though I didn't really want to touch this subject, I felt that it would be a disservice to not touch the subject, specifically because we don't have the resources that they have. At, you know that more popular YouTubers have and that larger media outlets have we get our information the same way that the average you know game fan gets their information through Twitter YouTube you know websites and then we will give our opinions on those matters and that is something we will continue to do um, but I want to make a more concerted effort to say where we're starting to get our information from. So if we report on a story, I always want to make sure that we're link we're telling you what media source we got our information from. So obviously today I gave you the information that uh, Nintendo Life provided the Pokemon Let's Go articles for us today uh, because they did. Now that's where we got that information and we gave you our own assessment of that information. Uh, what Philip Mewson did is unforgivable and unexcusable by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, now I know this guy dug himself into a hole. Uh, just to just just so people know, the last two uh, editors that worked for IGN's Nintendo as the head of Nintendo, those two people work for Nintendo now. Audrey Drake was the former host of MVC. She she works at Nintendo. You might have seen her during the Treehouse Live events at E3 and other events such as like most the Splatoon events that Nintendo likes to put on. And Jose Otero, who was the former host before Philip, he also got called up to Nintendo after last year's E3, which was a great move for him. Like Nintendo clearly has used IGN as a resource to bring on new talent. Philip Mewson literally got called up to the major leagues and had an opportunity to be impressive and maybe follow in those in those two uh, former hosts' footsteps, but Philip Mewson virtually threw away his entire career uh, with this with with this whole plagiarism scandal, and it's getting worse as time goes on. Every day there's a new headline that includes Philip Mewson. So my question to you is, Jaden, if you were a hiring manager at any company, right, and you start doing you know, you know, Philip Mewson applies for the job that you have, you know, you know, listed. You're going to do a background check, obviously. You're going to do a Google search, right? You and and when this when you see like the top 10 headlines of a Google search showing that he's been caught in a plagiarism scandal, do you hire this man for any type of job? That's a really interesting question. Um so part part of that so personally, I'd say no. But that's because I'm also I have, I have a lot of biases towards that. I'm a uh, I, I know I've probably mentioned it once or once or twice, but um, I've been like a um, <laughs> you could probably call me a career academic by this point. I've been in school way too long, uh, pursuing multiple degrees. And you know when you're when you're in <laughs> the field of academia, you play you don't you don't play around with plagiarism. So I've got some biases surrounding that. And from that standpoint. You know, if it were me personally, and I was the hiring director, I would say no. But I'm going to play devil's advocate here, and I and and maybe, maybe depending on the certain role that he has and and what he's looking for and the career and the um, the uh, profession, 
they I think there's some room for talking about it. As an editor, no, definitely not. Too much liability. Maybe in some sort of corporate thing. Uh, who knows? He could be a liability because if 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 somebody demonstrates a willingness to to steal articles, it could also be demonstrative of the willingness to steal um, corporate ideas. You know what I'm saying? So that could also be a liability. It really just depends on the role and the function. Um, See. I have been a hiring manager before, you know, at a much smaller scale, but I've done that job. And something I always did while waiting for a background check to come through, so I always just did a Google search, just a basic standard Google search. Now, if I Google search Philip Mewson's name right now, which I'm going to do. All right. The first thing that pops up. Oh hey, don't steal reviews and the rest of this week in games. That's the first thing that's from Wired. <laughs> yeah. If Another Wired's one. blasting you, that's pretty bad. Here's from Nintendo Enthusiast, a video game journalist's reaction to the Philip Mewson plagiarism controversy. Uh, IGN Fire's editor pulls post after plagiarism allegations surface. That's from Variety magazine. That's a ladies' Oof. magazine. Dude, but Variety's that's, a big name. If Variety's it's like that bad. All right. Evidence services of more word-for-word -word plagiarism by ex-IGN editor. This is a Forbes article. Forbes, one of the wow. largest video, one of the largest publications. Period. You're on Forbes. Obviously, the multiple Kotaku ones. Another one from Forbes. IGN investigating Death Cell review allegedly plagiarized by its Nintendo editor. That's just in the top stories category. The more yeah. you continue to scroll down the page, the worse and worse from smaller media outlets and larger media outlets combined, it, it continues to get worse. So, uh, it, you know, as a hiring manager, just doing a basic Google search, if these are the headlines that I'm seeing immediately, and I misspelled his name when I did my Google search, and I still, <laughs> got, I still got all the top headlines, this would be off-putting. Plagiarism in, plagiarism in general is bad, but in what we do, covering you know video game news just in media in general this is the largest cardinal sin that one can commit this is oh, literally definitely. the this is the worst thing you could do you hit because you not only discredit you know yourself but you do major damage to the company that you work for and even though i think ign has done a fantastic job of handling a shitty situation at the end of the day it's still come back on IGN. This is still like put a black eye on on the IGN brand. This is going to be something that could take years for t uh, for them to recover from if they can recover from this. Because now everything IGN does will be much more heavily scrutinized. And on top of that, I think about what it does, you know, to the community in a different way. Because of what Philip Mewson did and the way he got to IGN you know, coming from YouTube, does this hurt other people's chances of moving up from YouTube and coming into IGN? I think it could. Like, that's a really good point. And that's that's hard because, you know, there's the old saying, one bad apple spoils the bunch. I think I got that right. Yeah. Yep. And, and in my experiences in the 30 years I've been on this planet, that is very, very true. People have nice it things is. and then one person fucks it up and... There it is. Nobody can have the nice thing anymore. You know what I mean? So, like, I would, I would be lying if I didn't say that if, you know, IGN came to me and said, "We like what you do. Come work for us." I would be lying if I would say that I wouldn't take that job. If I, if I said I'm not taking that job, I'm lying. I'm outright lying. Because <laughs> I would take that job in a heart. I would, I would take that job in a heartbeat because it's not only you know moving myself forward you know just in general but it's also me taking the thing that i love the most nintendo you know that's not you know people and god but it's taking yeah. you know the one thing i love the most outside of those things and um and getting me paid to do that and putting me on a platform as big as ign and allowing me to just do that that would be a privilege to me that to me that is a privilege and yeah, Philip definitely. Mason, he got that privilege and he threw it away. But, you know, I, I want to stop in here real quick because 
I, I gotta give Philip Mucius some, some some credit. Uh, I, I still think his video, his his apology video was pretty shitty, but uh, the one thing that he didn't do that I really liked that he did do um, was he did not throw IGN under the bus. He said, "Don't blame IGN. Don't blame my comrades there. Don't don't blame that. It's all on me." He could have just said, "Hey, you know, it's IGN's fault. They vetted it. They, they you know, fuck them." And and he didn't. So I've got to give him some props for that. I still think it's wrong that he plagiarized. And but but I'm a big believer of giving credit where credit is due. So well, in my opinion, Philip Mewson, di- even though he didn't try to throw IGN under the bus, saying you know by you know saying what you said, they didn't vet my work and whatnot. But he he committed more cardinal sins. Uh, yeah. First off, he he challenged Jason Schreier of Coast It's really stupid, really fucking so, stupid. Yeah, that's the well, and not just that, but like we don't actually use Kotaku as a source on this uh on this channel. We don't. Uh, Kotaku has the Kotaku themselves has a sort of uh standing in in all of gaming journalism that isn't like too bright uh they've they've had a couple of scandals so i i always tend to stay away from kotaku i always view kotaku as the tabloid magazine of game journalism but here's the thing this in this instance being the tabloid magazine of gaming journalism is the best thing for them right now because they have managed to turn headline after headline after headline off of philip musin because they were the perfect media outlet to challenge in this instance. It was so stupid of him to say, Jason Schreier, look at my work and see what else you can find because you won't find anything. And that was a lie. Yeah. So, so That's like inviting part- 4chan to be like, hey, I-, I-, I dare you go through my Twitter and my social media and find something bad. You're not going to find it. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't fucking do that. Well, and then the other thing that Philip Mewson did, and I think the thing that's the most damning here is that Philip Mewson didn't actually apologize to Boomstick Game. I honestly think had Philip Mewson simply just sincerely apologized to Boomstick Gaming, yes, this would still be an issue. It would it would still be a very big issue. But we wouldn't be here talking about it right now. We wouldn't neither would any other, you know, person who covers video games in any capacity. But this is the story that everybody's talking about. Because he just simply didn't sincerely apologize. Had he just said, I am sorry for what I did. Like, it, it was, he never admitted it in his video. He called them plagiarism allegations. He's like, I, if he had legitimately just said, I plagiarized this material, I am sorry. It cost me the job of my dreams, it has discredited me. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, I don't think we'd be here as mad as we are, or anybody else would be as mad as they are about the whole situation. I honestly think that people can be more forgiving if you own up to it. And Phil Mewson did not actually own up to it, uh, and he monetized the video. And I think, I think yeah, that also gross. set a lot of people off. I'm like, what? Well, I, I don't know if he's a pathological liar or if there's there's something in Philip that doesn't feel whole and that's why he he does what he does and i understand that working at IGN is probably a stressful job uh when you're the editor the head editor of a of a you know department especially one like nintendo where it just seems like every day there's some major nintendo piece of news coming out and on top of having to write the reviews and having to play the games get the b-roll footage and stream the games and do all the things they do at IGN. But at the end of the day, he was getting paid to do that job, and he he did not commit to that job the way he should have. And uh, I will say this, though. I I I did stop listening to Nintendo Voice Chat uh, once Phil did take the that position. I felt like he was really uninformed, and it makes a lot of sense now. I always felt like he didn't know very much about the games he was talking about when he was talking about them. He Mm. would get, he would get jumbled up a lot when, you know, Brian or pair would ask him a question about a specific game. And I'm like, it makes sense because he probably didn't play them to completion or he didn't play them thoroughly. Or obviously he plagiarized 
reviews. So <laughs> it, it makes a lot of sense that I felt, I always felt like he didn't know exactly what he was talking about. That makes a lot of sense actually. So that that's it. I mean, I, I don't know I what what else to say about this subject other than like, I promise that we won't do that here and we will make a more concerted effort to let you know where we're getting our information from. Um, that being said, though, I when we, we don't do a whole lot of video game reviews here, but the ones we do, when I write a video game review, I never look at anybody else's review until my review is complete. Even if my review comes out a couple weeks later. In fact, Wild Odyssey was our attempt at doing like two reviews in one. We we the way we did Wild Odyssey was it's because by the time we did Wild Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey had been out for two months and Breath of the Wild had been out since March. Uh, and that and Wild Odyssey came out in January of this year. But the way we did that was instead of doing it as a basic review, we put them we 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 put the games head to head and tried to determine which game was better. So in a sense, we reviewed the games categorically, but we came up with our own thoughts, our own opinions on those games, and we put them head to head to determine which game we personally thought was a better product. And so, you know, we, we don't normally do reviews here, but everything we do do, we do it with our own thoughts and opinions or you know, we stay very far away removed from those sources, and I want to make sure that we continue to do that here at the Nintendo Power Zone. And I know Brendan isn't here right now, but Brendan is actually pursuing, like, a journalism degree while he's in college. Uh, I I would have loved to have heard his thoughts and opinions on this matter, because I think out of the, out of the three of us on this show, I think he would have been the most agitated uh, by the implications of what Philip Mewson has done at IGN. Uh, and in yeah. his own personal channel as well. I would have loved to hear it. Uh, next time we record, I definitely want to just get his two cents on the matter because I do think it is important coming from somebody who's actually going to school to be, you know, in front of a TV camera reading news. Uh, but yeah. anyway, guys. The last thing uh, I'll, I'll mention about this is um, this is super difficult or this is super problematic for gaming journalism as a whole when it comes out uh, so close after Gamergate, you know? Uh, not, not, not the Gamergate scandal that, was, that it turned into, but the original, like, original, original, original Gamergate where, hey, let's criticize gaming, gaming journalism. It, it's, it's a bad look because it kind of leads credence to be like, hey, maybe they're actually onto something. Maybe there's a problem in game journalism. And, and, and especially when we live... Uh, where, where one of the big problems, generally speaking, is that journalism as a whole is really under under uh, under much much scrutiny. It's a uh, it's a really bad look. So we, we I guess we'll have to we'll have to see the sort of um, long term implications and impacts um, that 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 yeah. come across. So I agree. Uh, like I said, I think IGN has done a fantastic job of handling this situation. Definitely. But, uh, We'll see what this does to their overall credibility. Hopefully, it doesn't tank them. Um, but if it does, I mean, maybe in the future, uh, you know, the people, those people, will go on to do something different, and they will have a better vetting process. Uh, but Hopefully. I think that's it. that's all I have to say on the matter. Uh, don't really ever want to have to talk about something like this again. But it needed to be addressed, so we did. We've done so. All right. Thank you.